Hey guys, what's up? So in this video, I'm talking about why coding is difficult. And like, there's so many different people that make, uh, make videos on this subject. And I think I just want to differ from that a little bit and talk about from like a professional perspective and why programming is difficult. And, um, so for number, number one though, like I come from a third generation programmer family, so I'm not sure if it just runs in my blood or whatever, but it definitely did not just like hit me. I didn't just magically learn how to become a developer. I struggled my ass off, uh, for many years. One of the reasons why programming is so difficult, though, is it, it requires that you change the way that you think. So Boolean logic is going to make us look at everything from like, uh, it makes us appreciate like inverse relationships, right? Uh, there's that term, uh, fell off the ugly tree and hit every branch, right? Well, the inverse relationship with that would be fell off the pretty tree and missed every branch, right? So um, those types of things, you know, Boolean logic, uh, anonymous functions allow us to start, you know, dealing with like... Um, Lambda calculus. Uh, if you're going to be video gaming, you're going to be dealing with linear algebra. Same with machine machine learning, deep learning. Um, all those concepts actually require that you change the way that you think. When you start doing object-oriented programming, you start to look at things as objects, as objects that have properties and certain pieces of functionality. Um, they're encapsulated, um, and you just start looking at things that way. Like object-oriented programming starts to you know forces you to think that way. And these aren't natural thinking patterns that we have as humans, I don't think. Um, and certain programmers can do it better than others. You know, certain people are just more adept to it. But I think that ultimately people, everybody can learn it if they stick with it. Um, one of the main reasons why programming, though, is so difficult from a professional perspective um, is communication, not just with other developers, uh, but communicating technical things to a non-technical audience is very difficult. Um, also dealing with cross team communication, you'd be surprised how often teams have like one person, um, that actually has the answers that you're looking for. And then to find out, you know, who that person is, is sometimes one of the major battles, but cross team communication is like a huge, huge thing. Um, estimates are always filled with the unknown. Um, so you're constantly asked to estimate something that you have no idea how long it's going to take you. You have no idea the amount of unknowns. Um, the only thing you do is you, you do your best guess and then, um, and oftentimes you're wrong. Uh, and then for the next time you go to try to make that, that estimate though, that's where you have a little bit more experience to be like, you know, at last time I didn't anticipate this and that and all that stuff. Um, and that could be like a, literally a career long kind of learning path type of thing. So, um, getting estimates right is something that beginner programmers, like they struggle with very, very bad, uh, very badly with that. Um, Another thing too is like senior devs, and this is kind of along the, the same lines, we're not told what to do. We're actually uh, told to figure out things, like figure out problems. And we're told to figure out problems that nobody else knows how to solve. Um, and in many cases, the people that are telling us to actually solve those problems have like much less experience solving those problems. Um, and then still having to communicate with those people, you know, why your solution is the best is something that is, is very difficult for a lot of developers. Um, deadlines are a constant stress. So a lot of people don't realize that like with programming, you finish one job, you're on to the next, um, you finish one project, you're on to the next, um, every project always has some sort of deadline. Um, there's always some deadline and usually people are stressed out over it. Uh, so that's another reason why this pro this programming job is hard because when you're under a constant state of stress, the job requires that you also have to learn, uh, and use your brain all the time. So naturally when you're under stress, um, those aren't the best working environments to study. Um, and this is a job that requires you to study and also learn on a day-to-day -day basis. And like sometimes your brain is just not caught up with that. And, uh, you know, just lack of sleep, too much partying, whatever it is, uh, too many personal problems, kids, um, all that gets in the way. But, you know, it doesn't matter if you're sick or not or how you feel. You still have these problems to solve. And that, that, is, uh, that is one of the more difficult things of being a developer. Um, so, you know, studying in general is difficult, right? Um, but studying under stress, under a deadline, um, is even more. Um, that's actually one of the reasons why people that went to college probably uh, are relatively good because, like, they're used to that, uh, the, the studying that they have to do, that they have to do day in and day out. Um, so a lot of technical decisions are made by people that are in charge, and um, that could be through reading blogs or whatever else. Uh, but one of the biggest things in this industry is the fact that there's so much uh, upward mobility, especially like right out of the, the gate for people that are new to development. Um, it doesn't take you too long to become a senior dev and then you start getting job offers all over the place. So programmers are constantly rotating in and out of companies. 
and they're also rotating in and out of teams within the companies uh, and management too. So when that happens, you end up having a situation where like you have a graveyard of a code base where all these people have you know written bits and pieces and had no intention to stay and now they're gone um, and the code is not documented and like nobody knows what the hell is going on. Um, another thing I noticed like in, in programming too is like anytime you get like an, uh, a new teammate, it seems like uh, it seems like no matter what, like there's always that that new teammate is always met with uh, skepticism. People are always like, uh, you know, I wonder what that dude knows or I wonder if he knows how to code. Like sometimes you'll get new new teammates and like they're really, really good. And then other times, um, you know, they're not like they don't they have like, you know, half the experience that maybe you have. But um no matter what, though, it's always like this big question mark when you have a new developer on the team um, and, and being able to like jump into a programming team is actually a skill unto itself because you don't want to be a jerk. You have to be friendly. You want to be a guy that like uh, people want to reach out to when there's problems. And, um, and and likewise, you want to be able to reach out to other people as well when there's problems, too. So, um, you know, social networking and just personal relationships is like something that senior developers have to do a lot that is just somewhat i think underestimated um another thing too is we have to be good writers like we have to be good writers and we have to be able to read pretty well um a lot of times like you have to do things like uh, uml diagrams so you have to be pretty good with system architecture at least enough to be able to understand uh, what it is that's laid out in front of you um, and, and that can be very daunting another thing too is like software development life cycles um, or even just software development methodologies there's so many different ones. Um, a lot of people just like with coding technologies and languages are very, very passionate about uh, the software methodology that they're using, whether it's Agile or something else. Um, one of the biggest challenges to being a developer, whether you're senior or brand new, is dealing with all the rules and regulations and progress uh, or processes in place um, that the company has you need to abide by and you need, you need to follow. Um, certain things like you might end up going to check your code in and it goes to a code review and like it takes like a day and a half for the result to come back and then you you find out the code review um got rejected because you had an extra piece of white space on the end um we could have a com you know conversation about whether or not that is even something that should ever be rejected and i would say no but like there are certain teams where you can't even have an extra white space character on a document um and if you do then like they're not gonna they're not gonna pass it and that could end up costing you a day or two um, and that's going to be your fault. You know, it's going to be your fault because if that's the rules and regulations in place, um, then you should know that as a developer. Um, there should also be like linting rules and things like that that are warning you about that sort of thing before you try to go to uh, submit that for code review. But no matter how good you are, um, that's going to happen to everybody. You're going to your code's going to be rejected for stupid little things like um, even if you're not on like a draconian team or whatever, you're still going to have your code rejected for things you didn't see. Um, you're going to make mistakes all the time. Um, you're going to run into situations where there's death marches and people are working overtime and weekends and stuff like that. And then you go to demo it and it still gets uh, just destroyed and dragged through the mud. Um, being able to take constructive criticism is something that uh, is very difficult for a lot of people. Coding is something where like there's so much arrogance in this field, uh, especially amongst men who are, uh, you know, who are obviously smart. Like for the most part, we're all smart people in this industry. Um, but there's some arrogance, you know, so having to, to, to sidestep around arrogance is, is something that's difficult. Um, how to not be arrogant yourself when you know that you're right and other people are making the decision that you know is wrong or that, you know, you feel really strongly is wrong and not the right way to go. Um, keeping juniors in check is also a very, very big challenge for senior developers because juniors will take a project, um, underestimate it, and then just start running with it, right? And then they'll start demoing stuff to analysts or management stuff that wasn't really like vetted by architecture or senior developers. Um, and then next thing you know, the management loves it because of the colors, the styling, and, and we're having to roll with something that just wasn't properly vetted. Um, so keeping junior developers in check is something that is, uh, is very difficult. People had a really hard time keeping me in check um, when I was a junior because I'd come in um, and immediately like with a chip on my shoulder, self-taught dev, I was always trying to show how much I could show <clears throat> um, as quickly as possible. And that's another thing, again, um, like dealing with, uh, with communication and dealing with new teams, you don't wanna be that guy that comes in and like tells everybody they're doing it all wrong. 
um, and start doing it a completely new way because um, you need to be very piecemeal with that type of uh, criticism, with that type of feedback, with that type of implementation. Um, and another thing too is you never want to be the guy that um, is the only one like making decisions on a project, right? Because one of the things about this industry as well that is very difficult, there's so many people that are put in positions that are there because um, you know they've been there forever and that there's so much of the documentation like the specification and everything is inside of their head. Um, and programmers can be territorial because if they have a bunch of knowledge that makes them uh, the guy that they have to go to every time there's a problem, um, that is job security. So if they go and they share all that information to everybody around them, and next thing you know, a junior um, can do the same thing that the senior's doing um, when it comes to like redeploying builds and just little things, like little maintenance things that come up all the time. Um, in many cases, junior devs aren't allowed to touch that stuff but it's it's mostly because senior devs are not giving the information to the junior devs enough for them to be able to take it over and do it. Um, anyway, those are just some of the, the complications that arise out of being a, like a senior developer in this industry. Um, and it's not just coding and, and why coding is difficult. It's much, much more involved than that. It's much more involved than Hello World or whiteboard exercises or any of that stuff. Um, so this is just a small piece of, of my thoughts on that. All right, guys, have a good day. Bye.